I spent over $250 to find the best synthetic watercolor paintbrush for painting fine details. I'll share how each one of them performed as well as some tips about how to use them to paint breathtaking details in a watercolor painting. Besides the paintbrush experiment, I discovered loads about misty forest paintings, so I hope this video and moody landscapes will inspire you. This is an experiment based on my own preferences and my own realistic style, which means that my favorite paintbrushes might not be yours, even though you'll get some insight about what's available and how to use it. I couldn't buy and test every single synthetic paintbrush that exists, so I stuck to a single well-known French website that ships to other countries and also mostly sells common brands that you can find on Amazon. And you may wonder, why splurge on a bunch of small synthetic paintbrushes? It all started with misty pine tree forest painting. First, I wanted to paint these types of landscapes, but I never could do it as I wished because my trees never looked realistic enough until I realized I had the wrong paintbrush type. I think I need something bouncier. And it turns out that a regular synthetic paintbrush might actually perform better to paint realistic details easily. And that might be obvious to some of you, but for those who are used to a certain type of paintbrush and love it, it's something that we tend to forget. That's when I ditched my natural hair and soft hybrid paintbrushes and bought over $250 worth of the synthetic kind in small sizes that would fit my small project. I started out with 35 paintbrushes total and the first thing I wanted to do was to get a feel for each one to decide which ones I was going to keep and which ones I was going to get rid of for my huge experiment. And that's why I made some kind of a swatch card to paint paintbrush lines. I took out all the paintbrushes that don't work out at all for my project, either because they felt very hard to work with or just too soft for painting fine details. One also ended up being a paintbrush with natural hair, so I got rid of it too and ended up with 23 paintbrushes. Line painting is only the tip of the iceberg, practice is always key, and that's why next I decided to go for full landscapes with each one of them to truly be able to assess how they perform. And it's time to share a little bit of the process with you. The goal was to paint realistic misty pine tree landscapes, see how painting the trees felt and looked, and most importantly, relax and have fun. I worked from imagination, not even knowing where to start after I wet the paper, which was a first for me, but it was an amazing experience. I also picked colors I thought would work well without overthinking it. I enjoyed the colors I picked for this moody theme, and this first paintbrush by De La Roni was pretty decent with thin and precise lines. The only thing I didn't like was that I had to reload it with paint frequently, but not too much either. To maintain fine details. I moved from light green paint to a more saturated version of it to build depth and I really like the results. I stuck to the same kind of landscape here before experimenting some more on that and you can see I left plenty of white paper spots to suggest mist on wet so the mist looks natural. This Tintoretto paintbrush performed okay it retained so much more water than the previous one that I had to use a paper towel and soak that up frequently. The De La Roni was a bit easier for control over the details maybe. This landscape here was pure bliss to paint and I got bolder with the composition, not knowing what I was going to do beforehand. I also added Daniel Smith Crinderton and Gold here. This Princeton paintbrush was my very first one. It retained water so well that I needed to soak up the excess paint before painting details. I also found it a bit hard to control the strokes, but it came out lovely and it was fun to paint. I think it looks like a forest landscape in Sweden. What do you think? I added a lot more Crinodrenone gold here for more of an autumn look and you can see how adding color wet on wet sets the final composition for the painting little by little. That's actually how I managed to do something different with each painting. 
Just get started and follow my intuition, stroke after stroke. This Leonard paintbrush was not my fave at all because the tip kept separating into two parts and overall the brush absorbed a lot of water so control was more tough. This was a daring experiment I had in mind to paint the trees up close and in the mist. That's why I added paint to most of the background here unevenly. I found this Da Vinci paintbrush to be pretty good, even though it dried up quickly and needed more paint often. But at the same time, I still had to remove any excess from the tip to paint the fine lines. I love how this landscape turned out and playing with the wet and wet and wet on dry techniques to achieve this. That was really key to get those trees to look like they're surrounded by mist. I decided to add a color from Daniel Smith called Burnt Scarlet for more creativity. I didn't like this paintbrush. The bristles didn't come to a reliable fine tip because it separated into several parts sometimes and it made it hard to paint. It also soaked up a lot of water and overall, that was not the best painting of the bunch. I also didn't like the looks of the burnt scarlet in the way I added it. I tried something new with blurry pine trees. I noticed that this Tintoretto paintbrush needs a lot of paint and water to make fine and precise lines. It was also hard to find a good balance between not enough and too much, so it was okay, but definitely not my favorite so far. I did love how the painting turned out, however. This next paintbrush I'm going to feature next is the one that I used in my very last watercolor class, and that's why it's time to introduce today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes social media, productivity, illustration, fine art, and much more. This new year, invest in yourself and your goals by starting a learning journey on Skillshare to take your career, skills, or side hustle to the next level. And if you're not sure where to start, Skillshare designed learning path to help you get from beginner to pro in no time. These hand-picked classes build on top of one another they're available for all levels and the variety of categories like design, fine art, and much more. I improved my own art skills thanks to Skillshare since 2018. I was a student there at first and I enjoyed it so much that I now teach there with 24 art classes in watercolor pencils, watercolor, and even oil pastels. This new class here will teach you the ropes of misty forest paintings that look realistic and magical just like the ones featured in this video. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you'd like to join, head on over to the description of the video to find it. Thank you so much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I didn't take any risks here and just wanted to experiment some more with close-ups of the trees in the mist. And I really love this paintbrush. That's the one I used in my class. Considering it's affordable and not a fancy brand, it's pretty good and reliable, although I still needed to remove any excess paint from the tip before painting the trees. I finished my first spread and first eight paintbrushes experiment and it was time to start another one and push creativity a bit more. I absolutely loved this color theme I chose by chance, but I decided I should try out all my other muted green colors next just to see which ones I liked best. I started adding my Daniel Smith Green Appetite Genuine Color this time and I added a pond. I really enjoyed this brush by Isabay, not sure how to pronounce that. And I never tried this brand before, but I was able to quickly find the right balance between the brush being too full of paint and water or too dry and I managed to create details that looked nice and natural at the same time, so that's a great discovery. I was a bit scared with this Tintoretto paintbrush because it's so large compared to the other ones, but I was surprised by its ability to come to a fine tip and make fine lines. I only needed to be careful and soak up any excess paint. It really reminded me of my favorite paintbrush, the Silverbrush Black Velvet. 
It may even hold more paint, but it releases it gently over time, which was great. Maybe not the best for small pine trees, but nice for most other types of paintings. Here I switched greens with Daniel Smith's Serpentine Green. And right away I noticed that the bristles are frayed and that made me believe that this brand isn't for me. I also tried to cut off the excess, which probably wasn't a good idea, it was actually worse, but I still managed to paint good looking trees. And I absolutely love to paint this little river and adding very subtle details with the brush. It absorbed a lot of water and I needed to remove any excess frequently, like many other paintbrush I've tried before. And that's actually not a bad thing in itself, as long as you are aware of it. You really need to get to know your brush, especially for this type of very detailed work. I wanted to practice painting a more dramatic sky here and use Perlin Green again. And you can see the format of the painting really helps with adding drama. And I love, love this Raphael paintbrush. It really felt so elegant and great to paint with. I still needed a lot of paint, but then I didn't really need to remove any excess that much. And that was super agreeable. It also felt really nice and expensive to paint with. I think that so far the colors that I used here remain my favorite combo, which is the one from the first spread. And this is also my favorite way to paint pine trees thanks to the blurry background. I introduced Dano Smith Undersea Green this time, and this brush was nice. It was just harder to find a balance between too loaded with water and too dry. You can see I painted a few trees here, and that's okay too. There are many ways to paint this kind of landscape. And adding birds with a synthetic brush really is great. It makes the strokes feel easier and more natural. And I remember that in the future because I used to always use my silver brush black velvet for that. I experimented with undersea green still and a slightly more elaborate landscape. And this Tintorito paintbrush was not bad, but it was hard to assess if it was too wet or too dry because the strokes didn't always come easily, they were usually on the dry side. I did find, however, that these synthetic paintbrushes are also great to give texture and realism to rivers, ponds, lakes, things like these. I could do that with my usual paintbrushes without any problem, but this just feels a little nicer and I might just switch for good to synthetic when I paint details. I tried forest green here by Sennelier, but I find it flashier than the other colors, so I muted it with my raw sepia. I wanted to spice things up a little bit for composition through perspective, and starting on the wet still is for me the best way to go with these types of landscapes. You just apply color in the way that you envision it, and then you see how it goes. But then it's also important to be patient and push through the end to really see what the painting will be like. Because remember the ugly stage, and usually those wet washes are it. So you really have to be patient and keep painting. This Da Vinci brush was really good generally more on the drier side, but really nice. And with this painting, I really started to see a pattern with brands that I like more. This Windsor Newton paintbrush was fine, maybe not my favorite for fine details. I tried painting a cabin here, but it didn't turn out as I wished. I'm still really happy with all the experiments in the second spread. I feel like I'm learning a lot, not just about paintbrushes, but also about painting from imagination and just painting beautiful pine tree landscapes. In this last spread, I decided to try different dark and muted blues this time, and I went for Daniel Smith Mayan Blue Genuine. And I was really excited to try this paintbrush by Silver Brush because I love their products and it turned out pretty good with a good balance between too wet and too dry. I still needed to dab it sometimes on a paper towel just to remove the excess water, but it was nice to paint with. And I kept adding elements to my painting like those little birds. Here I included Daniel Smith Mayan Dark Blue. 
And I was surprised in a good way by this paintbrush. It's actually the best of the Leonard paintbrushes that I've tried so far. I was a bit afraid. It's still not that firm and not bouncy enough, so it's harder to control, but it's decent. And this time I experimented with adding rocks and I really love how this turned out. Back to Daniel Smith Luna Blue here. And I can tell you I love Princeton paintbrushes just from trying a few of them here. And I understand their reputation now. However, with this paintbrush in particular, it felt a little bit thirsty most of the time. So it was harder to create strokes and find a good balance between too wet, too dry. It needed a constant flow of paint, but it was still nice to paint with. And here I experimented by trying perspective on the trees and it was always a pleasure to add those little birds with small synthetic paintbrushes. Indigo is one of my favorite colors and I tried the Daniel Smith kind here. It's really dark. I was curious about this paintbrush because it's not a known one. It's just the one that the store sent me and that's in their name. It's decent, but it's not awesome. It's also hard to find a balance between too dry and too wet. And this time I experimented with a waterfall. I was scared to do it wrong from imagination, but it's one more skill that I was developing without planning to go that far. So I was super happy with that painting. Maybe I would have liked more beautiful trees, but that was still fine. This time I switched to Saturday Indigo, and this one is actually lighter than the Daniel Smith kind, much lighter. I had no idea about what to paint. I just went for a simple landscape with rain. This Kum paintbrush, and I'm not sure I pronounce it right, is really a brand that I didn't know anything about. But it's actually an awesome paintbrush. I'm really happy that I discovered it here. The only thing is it needs to be loaded with color often, but then the strokes feel so great and elegant. I know I'll use it again. I tried Synergy Paints Gray here. It's not blue, but it's still great for moody landscapes. And this is a simplistic but elegant landscape with a river, but that was a good exercise because it reminded me how realistic painting can also be simple and beautiful and realistic. I was bummed when I saw that the paintbrush I was gonna have here was Leonard again, but in fact, that one was really nice. You needed a lot of paint and water often, but the tip was nice and the control and details turned out to be great. This Rafael paintbrush is pretty good without being awesome. I needed to dab it a lot on a paper towel to remove the excess water, but I really loved to add the tiny details. Here I wanted to try something different, and again, this paintbrush didn't convince me. I didn't like how the trees turned out as much, but if you look at all my paintings, you can barely see that. You can barely see a difference. So don't worry if you don't have the perfect paintbrush either. It's not a big deal. Now I do have a better idea of what brands I might want to explore further and this was also an awesome way to practice misty forest paintings and strengthen my style around it, which I think is very important for us artists to do. So I hope this helped you or inspired you to try it for yourself, maybe with one paintbrush, but you can try a bunch of different landscapes. And you can also vote in the comments and tell me which one is your favorite. And remember also to grab your free one month trial of Skillshare in the description. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.